there, I'm Christine, and this is the Canadian Constitution Foundation's Freedom Update. This week, we had a really important hearing in federal court. It was on our motion seeking an order from the Attorney General of Canada to deliver unredacted documents about the federal government's use of the Emergencies Act, a use that we say at the CCF was illegal and unconstitutional. The hearing took place on August 8th, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine and I'm the litigation director at the Canadian Constitution Foundation, a legal charity that fights for fundamental freedoms in Canada. I upload regular videos about our ongoing cases and about other interesting developments in constitutional law in Canada. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, hit the subscribe button below. It really helps my videos out a lot. And if you ring the notification bell, you will always find out when a new video has been uploaded. So you'll never miss out. Please remember that my videos are for your information purposes only. They are not legal advice. If you have your own legal question or problem, please consult your own lawyer. Okay, so let me tell you about this hearing that we had on August 8th about our request, our motion to see, seek access to these secret documents that the Trudeau government is refusing to provide to us. These documents are supposed to provide an explanation as to why the government invoked the Emergencies Act. As all of you who watch this channel already know, we are challenging the government's use of the Emergencies Act in response to the 2022 Freedom Convoy. The use of that act we say was unconstitutional and illegal. And as a part of that challenge, we have asked the government to provide us with documents that are supposed to explain their reasons for invoking that really extraordinary legislation. Remember that that legislation allows the government to do things like create new criminal law without parliamentary oversight. Right now, the only explanation that the government has given us as to why they invoked this really powerful and exceptional legislation is just one conclusory statement. It's just one sentence. It says, the ongoing Freedom Convoy 2022 has created a critical, urgent and temporary situation that is national in scope and cannot be effectively dealt with under any other law. This obviously is not an explanation. It's not any evidence at all. It's just basically a restatement of the threshold, the legal threshold that exists in the Emergencies Act itself. It's kind of like saying we met the legal threshold because we met the legal threshold. It's just circular and meaningless. Obviously, it is not a good enough explanation as to why the government invoked this legislation. And we know that the government has more information in their possession. They're just refusing to provide it to us. The government has said publicly that there were what they call robust discussions with cabinet and in something called the incident response group. The Incident Response Group is a secretive closed door committee chaired by Prime Minister Trudeau. It's made up of senior government officials and cabinet ministers, and it was founded in 2018. And it's described as a dedicated emergency committee that will convene in the event of a national crisis or during incidents elsewhere that have major implications for Canada. So we know that there are documents related to both these two committees, Cabinet Committee and the Incident Response Group, and in court on August 8th, we asked to be granted unredacted access to the minutes from cabinet and from that incident response group as they relate to the federal government's decision to invoke the Emergencies Act. Now the government has given us some documents, but those documents are so highly redacted that they are unreadable. It's just huge swaths of blacked out boxes. We say that this is needless secrecy and without access to an explanation as to why the government invoked the Emergencies Act, the court is going to struggle to do its job at all. We've described this as the federal government attempting to use the court as a fig leaf to cover their illegal use of this exceptional law and then using cabinet secrecy and also national security uh, secrecy to evade any judicial review. Now on August 8th, we argued the motion to try to get access to these unredacted materials and to help co the court balance some competing interests, we outlined some options and novel procedures that could allow the court to 
review these documents so that it can actually do its job, but without compromising uh, the principles of national security and cabinet secrecy when those principles apply. We argued that the court could grant access to the cabinet minutes and incident response group minutes on a council only basis which would mean that only the lawyers involved would have access to the documents. I wouldn't even have access to the documents, but that would allow the evidence to be tested in an adversarial setting. Alternatively, we argued for the appointment of something called an amicus, and that would be a neutral third party, a very senior lawyer who's very respected with national security clearance, who would also be able to uh, review those documents. This would achieve the same goal of allowing the evidence to be examined and challenged. Part of what we will be challenging is the government's claim that they had no other option but to invoke the Emergencies Act, that they had no other legal tools to remove the Freedom Convoy. And we say that the record they've presented to us and to the court doesn't show that. In fact, there's actually some evidence to to the opposite. The House of Commons had their own committee that was looking at the government's use of the Emergencies Act, and there have been witnesses testifying at that committee. Both Ottawa's interim police chief, Steve Bell, and the RCMP commissioner, uh, Brenda Lucky, they have both told that House of Commons committee that they never asked the federal government to invoke the Emergencies Act. This is directly contrary to the testimony that the Trudeau government's minister, public safety minister, Marco Mendocino, uh, well, he said that it was the police who asked the government to invoke the Emergencies Act. Well, the police say that that isn't the case. The public needs to get to the bottom of this. And to do that, we need the evidence. In court on August 8th, the government argued to keep all of this evidence secret. They called our attempts to get this evidence a classic fishing expedition based on speculation. That just isn't the case. We do know that these documents exist and the government has said that they contain an explanation as to why the use of this law was necessary. If the government had provided us with a proper record, we wouldn't have needed to bring a motion like this. And if the government continues to refuse to provide a full record, we will argue that the court should draw an adverse inference against the government. The government refuses to provide an explanation. Well, then we can only conclude that they don't have a good one and that the use of the Emergencies Act was unjustified. The August 8th hearing lasted most of the day and was heard by Justice Mosley at the federal court who asked a lot of questions of both sides. Our lawyers, uh, Sujit Chowdhury and Jenani Shamuganathan did a really incredible job arguing this motion. And Justice Mosley said that he's gonna try and get a decision within two weeks, which is great news and actually really quite fast. I think that it shows the importance of this issue. I'll be sure to keep you updated when we get a result to our motion to access unredacted versions of these secret documents. So hit subscribe and hit the notification bell and that way you will not miss the update. Once we have the result from this motion, then it is on to the main hearing. Uh, one, that's the hearing where we will hopefully use this evidence to argue that the use of the Emergencies Act was unconstitutional. And that main hearing is scheduled for October, although there's a chance it could also happen in November. So one last thing before I sign off, we are also running a giveaway contest right now at the Canadian Constitution Foundation to win a free copy of Andrew Lawton's new book, The Freedom Convoy. I know that it's a book a lot of you would really enjoy reading. It provides a whole background about what happened with the Freedom Convoy, the how the momentum behind it built up, how it ended and about a lot of the personalities involved. It's a really behind the scenes look and an on the ground look with hours of interviews with some of the demonstrators contained in here. It provided so much perspective that I think has been lacking and uh, I loved reading it and I think you would too. So if you wanna sign up to win a free copy of this book, we're gonna have a draw for, for a giveaway and you can sign up for that at the ccf.ca slash book contest. The draw is gonna take place on September 6th, so be sure to sign up before then. Entering the book contest also signs you up for our email freedom updates, which we send once a week. They are short updates about our ongoing cases and what's happening at the Canadian Constitution Foundation. You can also unsubscribe at any time. 
Okay, that's all for this update. Thanks for watching and let's keep fighting for freedom in Canada.